Hey there, gang. Welcome back. Especially because, frankly, I did not think you would be back after the stunt I pulled last time, ending on a cliffhanger. So, <laughs> we're going to pick up with the unboxing right where we left off. So, if you like comic books, stick around. We're going to have some fun. Hey there, Bubby. Welcome to Shanghala. My name is Duke, and this is an unboxing video. And yes, we are going to pick up right where we left off in the last video. I do apologize for kind of ending on a cliffhanger like that. I uh, I realized the video was too long, and I just decided, you know, to chop it right where it was, and kind of got cute there with the cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry about that. I'm just emulating comics. That's how comics do it, right? So uh, anyway, please do like, share, subscribe, comment away, do all the groovy things, and let's go, Brandon. No, no, no. <laughs> let's let's <laughs> let's uh, let's just suck it up and drive on. Oh, very very nice. And this looks like, huh? This is one of our labels. I don't know where this came from. Maybe this was for sale in the store and we took it out because it had been on the shelf for too long. I don't know. Famous Funnies is the first regular ongoing monthly comic book. Well, I can't say the first. There was a, a book in the uh, 20s from Dell Publications that didn't last that long, but it was a, a regular publication. But this is this is the first ongoing series in the format that we recognize today as a comic book. What issue number is this? It's usually right up here, and it is. It's, oh, well, it's on the label anyway, number 36. So that's an early issue. This, um, this is probably 34, 35. Uh, this, this would predate Action Comics number one. This is quite nice, and not in bad condition, really. We've got a one-inch spine split up here at the top, but otherwise, and about a half inch down at the bottom, but otherwise the spine is pretty nice. And the edges are nice and tight. <laughs> the, gay, the gay 30s. Uh, well, back when gay meant something different. <laughs> That's okay. But this uh, this book reprinted uh, comic strips of the day. And uh, Joe Palooka, Dixie Dugan, Jane Arden, uh, Ned Brandt. If if you are you know fairly young, you know, thirties, forties, you may never have even heard of any of those uh characters. Maybe you've heard of Joe Palooka, you've heard the name but didn't know he was an actual comic strip. So let me know in the comments if you're actually familiar with any of those strips. You can actually read these books. There's a nice website called comicbookplus.com. They have the full run of famous funnies. You can read um all of those issues online for free. Except the Buck Rogers strip. The Buck Rogers is uh, still under copyright. And so those, uh, those issues that are published online are missing those pages. Usually between two and four pages per issue. But it's in here, I bet you. Here's something else nice. Street and Smith Publications. Doc Savage Comics. And Street and Smith did volume numbers. So volume two, number six, is probably whole number 18. But look at that, August 1943. Very nice. Huckleberry Finn, what is this? Something about Huckleberry Finn fighting Doc Savage. I don't know what that's all about. <laughs> and I think this is also something that must have been in the uh, physical store that we've just decided to put on eBay because it was just in the store for too long. We like to rotate the stock in the store, and that's the kind of thing that your average DC Marvel fan uh, coming into the store wouldn't appreciate. But um, boy, those will do well on eBay. I bet both that the Doc Savage and the Famous Funnies. This does well anywhere. Jungle Action with the Black Panther, with Killmonger. Uh, this is Amazing Spider-Man 346. That's a nice Venom cover. 347, something famous about this cover, and I can't remember what it is. And it's not just the take on Hamlet with the Alas Poor Yorick. Something in particular, apart from being a Venom cover, I'll have to look it up, can't remember what it is. Captain America 341, that is the, um, what's his name? You saw him come to life on the Falcon and Winter Soldier series just recently. 
What was his name? John Walker. That's it. Had to think for a second. X-Men number four, first appearance of Red Omega. Marvel Age. Why is this? Marvel Age was like a, a, an in-house promo book for, um, for Marvel. You had lots of articles and features on upcoming product and uh you know you had some comics features in here it looks like it's reprinting an early stanley steve ditko story with a character who looks very much like peter parker huh maybe that's what this oh here it is the first marvel mutant story ever by stanley and steve ditko from amazing adult fantasy 14 ah that's why this is in here. Because normally Marvel Age books, kind of like the Eternals I spoke of uh, earlier, those go, you know, you pretty much sell them by the pound. <laughs> you know, in, in the Eternals, you know, until recently. But even now, Marvel Age, I mean, you can hardly give them away. But this one is, uh, this one is something special, something neat. So you might want to look for that. Usually about a week after I do one of these videos, you'll find these uh, on eBay. Again, the seller name is .com Comics. This, I am told, although I haven't verified it, uh, Ghost Rider 15 is purportedly the first glow-in-the-dark cover in comics. I don't know if that's 100% true. Like I said, I haven't verified it. A little bit of a foil cover here on Silver Surfer number 50. This is, somebody wanted me to know, and that's the boss's handwriting right there, Spider-Man number 4, a newsstand copy. And again, by this period... This would have been mid-90s or so, early 90s. The uh, newsstand accounted for about 10% of the sales, and they're both newsstands. There's number five. And not only that, but the books that sold on the newsstands tended not to survive in high grade because they were bought by a different clientele uh, than the uh, folks who frequented the comic book stores. So those are all newsstand copies. We'll have to see how those do, but that should bring a multiple. Second appearance of Deadpool in X-Force number two. Doesn't actually do that well. That'll probably sell for less than 10 bucks. Number 11 with the first actual appearance of Domino. 15, uh, excuse me, five, not 15, five of X-Factor. That's the uh, first appearance in Cameo of Apocalypse. There's another one. And we've got the direct sales and the newsstand edition. And let's keep on trucking. Looks like the rest of this box is gonna be fairly modern. Here's uh, Rhino and Cardiac in Amazing Spider-Man 344. That's a newsstand copy. Avengers West Coast 62. These have uh, taken off since the WandaVision episode. X-Men Annual number 14, the first appearance of Gambit, predates uh, Uncanny X-Men 266. There's another Mr. Sinister and another newsstand version. This is the first uh, Tim Drake in the Robin costume, Batman 457. X-Men 282, first appearance of Bishop. X-Factor 24, first appearance of Angel as Archangel. New Mutants Annual number two, first U.S. appearance of Psylocke, uh, Betty, uh, Betty Braddock. First appeared over in the Marvel UK books. She's the sister of Captain Britain. Uh, Incredible Hulk 377, first appearance of the Professor Hulk version of the Hulk. Here's X-Factor 6, and that is the first full appearance of Apocalypse. Here is the classic Days of Future Past story. Super double awesome iconic classic, both in story and cover. And it's a newsstand edition, very nice. Here's a Daredevil 168, right in the heart of the Frank Miller run. This one's got an unfortunate spine bend in it. Now, that would press out, probably. Well, it's got a little bit of a spine roll as well. You might be able to press that out. I, I'm hard-pressed to try and sell it as a single. I think that that probably should go in a multi-book lot because of that bend. But uh, I believe that's a nice uh, Paul Smith art inside as well as on the cover. Here's another, uh, another X-Men with binary. That's nice. Some more Frank Miller Daredevil, number 169, 170, 171, at last monthly. So Frank Miller started on Daredevil at number 158. 
It didn't take too long before he was writing it as well as drawing it, but he initially got on the book because nobody else wanted it because Daredevil was in danger of cancellation and it had gone down to bi-monthly status. Uh, so between 158 when Frank Miller started and 171, the sales picked up enough under uh, Frank, and, and deservedly so under Frank Miller, that uh, the book finally here at 171 went back to monthly publication. And what do we got? Two books in that bag? We do. What do you think? Is this something else or is it two copies? Oh, no, it was it was actually two books, two bags stuck together. Here's 172. Marvel 2-in-1 Thing and Starhawk. Oh, this is uh, first appearance of her, which is an analog of him. Him uh, became Adam Warlock. So, there's that. This is nice. Well, we have uh, we were in the moderns, but now we're back in the very early Silver Age. Tales to Astonish 54, with Giant Man and the Wasp. Very nice. Who is El Toro? Look at him. <laughs> Running like a bull with a, with a rubber hat with horns on it. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Uh, Incredible Hulk 182, that's got a cameo appearance of Wolverine. So technically it's his third appearance, maybe even fourth. I think there's some place where he appeared in an, a promo ad or something beforehand. And then he was in a cameo at the last panel of issue 180. Had the full appearance in 181, that's like a six, $7,000 book now. And then he appears in the first few panels of this issue. So this is what some people call the Poor Man's Hulk 181. It's 182. Nice early appearance of uh, The Blob and The Vanisher. X-Men number 38. There's number 26. Uh, Strange Tales. This is uh, 132 with uh, The Human Torch. And they eventually they had to bring in the thing because the torch wasn't selling that well. And I didn't know this until recently, but some of the early uh, uh, Human Torch stories in Strange Tales were actually written by Jerry Siegel, co-creator of Superman. Uh, here's uh, some Doctor Strange action, number 131. This uh, issue is popular, number 130. This is in pretty nice shape. But because of the, <laughs> the Beatles mop tops here on the cover... Uh, that's a popular issue. The Terrible Trio, very nice. That same distinctive inking I was speaking of earlier. That I'm pretty sure is Joe Sinnott. Here's number 23. And now we're into the uh, early Bronze Age. Fantastic Four, number 104. This is after Jack Kirby has left the title. He left it number 102 except for uh, a couple of issues that sort of cannibalized the story that was undone when he left. Here's number 107. That's a popular cover. Number 105. Avengers number 20. That's sweet, and it's a pop art productions book. Marvel Collector's Item Classic number 1. That's nice. A little rough here down at the bottom. But look at this. We've got a reprint of an early uh, Ant-Man story. The second issue of Fantastic Four. Uh, what is that? Number three of Amazing Spider-Man and an early journey into mystery. So nice. That's an early reprint series. Here is number three. Avengers number 13. The Castle of Count Nefaria. Amazing Spider-Man annual number seven. Number 91, that's a classic cover of Amazing Spider-Man. What else have we got here? There's another book hiding under there. And that's the uh, Craven the Hunter versus Spidey and Kazar, or Kazar. And looks like this is the last stack. That's it, boys and girls. That's, that's what we've got in this box. Here's another 282 of Uncanny X-Men with the first appearance of Bishop. World's Finest Comics, number 128. I'm just looking at this because <laughs> it's a little unclear to me what is actually happening. And DC covers notoriously would have, um, you know, a lot of word balloons really explaining the action. 
And I guess, I guess if I'm trusting what Robin is saying, because it sort of looks like Batman has crossed over with the elongated man <laughs> and is shooting kryptonite beams out of his eyes and is making this building kind of fizzle and some kind of carbonated fuzz. But, uh, but according to Robin... I guess the fuzz is attacking him through the eyes and changing him. I don't know. That's weird. I, I want to read that story now just because I really can't figure out on that cover what's happening. Wonder Woman presents Wonder Girl. Now, this this is tricky. And this, this will give you some indication of why Wonder Girl ended up in the Teen Titans. You had different editors there. And the editor who was uh, taking care of Brave and the Bold and had the Teen Titans decided to use Wonder Girl as a member of the team, not realizing that she was not a distinct character. The Wonder Girl stories are just stories of Wonder Woman when she was a girl, much like Superboy at this time. And uh, But if you if you go by the covers, and especially the covers where you would have through the magic of Amazonian science, Wonder Girl and Wonder Woman teaming up, sometimes even with Wonder Tot. <laughs> you might have be forgiven just from the covers of presuming she was a distinct character, but she was not. So that's why they had to create the whole Donna Troy persona, because, again, they used the character not even knowing who the hell she was. <laughs> uh, Spectacular Spider-Man number one. Silver Surfer number nine. There is Superman number 240. Very nice. The amazing new adventures of Superman. Oh, cool. Rip Hunter Time Master number 18. Very nice. You always got to love a purple dinosaur cover. Sweet. And this is Our Army at War. Some early Sergeant Rock action. That's number 140. And then the uh, the last book in the box is the second appearance of Shang-Chi in Special Marvel Edition number 16. With the next issue, number 17, this would become Master of Kung Fu. But there you go. That's everything in that box. I hope you had fun. Flash, I'm sorry. We didn't see anything starring you, really. But uh, thanks for being here. And thank you, folks, for being here. We will see you in the next video, and until then, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.